So while we're waiting, uh, two notes here. So number one, you guys have uh, three notes. You have the Wi-Fi here. If you don't already, just uh, connect to the Wi-Fi. Uh, point number two is we do have the hashtag WebRTCBCN. If you have comments, if you have feedback, if you have anything, please uh, hashtag it, Twitter, and we're checking it. So please let the world know what, what we're talking about here, please. Uh, and there's one other point. Oh, uh, just to, to, as you guys already know, we're, we're grouping these guys together. But by no, by no means does this mean they're talking about the same topic. Uh, we're, we're trying to add different perspective to everything here. So uh, different perspective is good, and different topics are good. So please uh, you know, keep the questions coming. Keep the per different perspective coming. All right? And with that, I don't think John, you're first. All right. So with that, let's turn it over to Oscar. Thank you. Okay, th so thank you everyone for being here. Um, my name is Oscar Devora, and I am uh, MediCloud Engineering Lead uh, in Talkbox. And uh, today I wanted to, to talk about a little bit WebRTC, so I just put this title, WebRTC anytime, anywhere, any app, uh, from small to big multi-party audiences, because basically I wanted to uh, have a little review on uh, what is necessary for actually getting WebRTC out there in the, in the street and having it, having it working. And uh, once you do that, the use cases that keep coming and that uh, appear, which probably are something that was not possible be really before in an open manner, uh, also come with a number of requirements on architecture, on how you have to stream media, etc. So basically I wanted to s make a review of uh, different use cases and then see how does it map into different requirements on architecture for streaming media, and uh, see basically what you think about that. So first of all, and before starting, uh, just for me to gather, uh, I already asked this uh, last time, I would like to know how many of you actually are programming or are developing applications or use cases in for WebRTC. And from those that didn't raise their hand, uh, how many of you are familiar with the technology? So uh, you already had some introduction before. Okay, thank you. So basically, <clears throat> at least a good chunk of you will know that uh, what WebRTC is not actually, and basically what it actually provides WebRTC. WebRTC is a set of enablers, is a technology that actually brings the possibility to business to uh, enable blending of video communications in a seamless manner and in a very flexible way with a number of use cases that it's certainly not constrained and it's open to any, anything that a product manager can think of or come out for a, for a business case, right? So we already had before some glance of what WebRTC APIs offer and we know that basically what we have is basically a set of APIs that are embedded into the browser and that uh, have the capacity, give the capacity to the browser to actually be able to stream media uh, and communicate in a peer-to-peer -man -peer manner, if you like, with other engines in the network, either browser or whatever you can invent. However, what, the, what, what comes with the browser is basically the API, uh, the set of protocols that actually the specification of protocols by the ETF, ETF that uh, allow the browser to talk with something else, and then, uh, if you like, another part of this puzzle of WebRTC is the open source that actually Google uh, made available, so that it's available to anyone, so that they, anyone can see and look how this is made, how this can work, and even uh, use it for integration, right? So. With these th with these three things, basically, uh, 
we could do some very basic applications, but if we actually want to build some large scale uh, product that actually uses video communications that is, uh, many business basically what they need is to actually deploy a, a sort of uh, ecosystem of applications that Im implement a given s use case that depending on the, uh, on the platform, uh, they, they may have a slightly different use case than in the other platform, but altogether it's an experience and it gives access to a given business model or to a given application, right? So basically, the, the business will want to actually implement something here that uh, is their application that can be anything, can be banking, can be e-health, can be sports, can be uh, support, tutoring, anything. We'll see some examples afterwards. But basically what uh, WebRTC gives out of the box from, from the browser, let's say, uh, would allow you to implement some very basic uh, form of it based on, on the website. Um, and still depending on whether you are using one browser or another browser, you would have uh, differences in how they behave or in how they uh, operate a little bit because maybe we are still in, in, in this period that things are not complete completely. Uh, so so that you, you would also need to take care of that. So if you really want to, to actually be able to, to deploy a, an experience across many platforms and uh, beyond just the peer-to-peer -peer between two browsers, for example, you actually at least you would need to have um, plugins to, to be able to work with uh, Internet Explorer and Safari maybe. You would need to have some decent SDKs so that you can cover mobile uh, implementations and that it, it is interoperable with the website with